hey, have you guys ever had um, one of those things where you can't get a certain movie scene or, or movie out of your head? Kind of like a song, but this one's like the whole scene. I have that now with this with the movie Eurovision. I just keep it. In my head. I don't know why. Um, not that it's related to this at all. I just wanted to share that with you. But anyways, welcome to another episode of Superhero Deep Dive. I of course am your host Jason. I have a fun episode set up for you today. Uh, let me get my normal disclaimers out. If you hear a dog barking in the distant background, that's because he is a jerk and he hasn't done it until I start recording. So anyways, the information is pulled from uh, different sources across the internet and may or may not be completely complete, but they do give a really good insight on the current superhero. Also, you can catch me every Tuesday and Thursday on Outworld Fleet Radio throughout the day. Their website is www.un-con-ventional.com forward slash radio. You can email me directly at b, the number four, it all, so b for it all at yahoo.com. I mean, that's with any kind of questions, comments, concerns, requests for future episodes, anything like that. I'm all for it. Um, I get emails quite frequently, so I do appreciate it. Um, you can also catch me on Twitter and Instagram under Super Deep Dive. And I always use the hashtag Superhero Deep Dive. And you can catch me on YouTube under Superhero Deep Dive. I post um, superhero shorts every day throughout the week. Um, I try to keep the weekends off because it is hard to do all that stuff, but um, I do that. I have new videos posting every Friday, uh, and of course, the podcast comes out every Tuesday at 8 a.m. Eastern Time. So, yes, that's all done. Ha 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 ha. Anyways, this week I am talking about Spiral. She is that mojo henchwoman that's got multiple arms and always moves around like a ballerina. Love the character. This came in as an email request. So thank you, thank you very much, Tammy. I appreciate it. I hope I do it justice. So her real name is Rita Wayward um, and she's better known as Ricochet Rita before she was known as Spiral. She was a professional stunt woman who befriended Longshot who then, or when he first appeared on Earth. Now, Longshot is this guy from Mojo World. Um, he's got a mullet, and he's kind of like Domino in the fact that he's got luck powers. Like, things just kind of work out for him. Um, the best way to describe him is exactly how Domino was in Deadpool 2. Like, she would crash a bus, and she would jump out at just the right moment to where... You know, she would be fine. Um, that's kind of how things work for the long shot. He just had these kind of luck altering powers. How that works, I don't know. I think it was kind of lazy writing, but it kind of worked. <laughs> um, anyways, Rita was attacked by her evil future self, which led to her meeting Longshot and falling in love with him. When Longshot sought to return to his home dimension, the Mojoverse, the love struck Rita went with him, only to watch Longshot fail and be captured by the Dimension's evil overlord Mojo. Longshot was promptly mind wiped to forget all about Rita, while a much worse fate was left for her. Bum bum bum. Alright, after holding her prisoner for several years, at which point Rita was made to serve as guardian for Mojo's army of ex babies. Yes, it is just as it sounds. X-Men babies. Um, Mojo forced his chief scientist Arise to perform extreme physical and mental modifications on Rita to recreate her as a loyal subordinate. These experiments left her with six arms, two of which were robotic, um, turned her hair white, and drove the young woman insane through forcibly evolving Rita's mind to the point that she could see into other dimensions that were used for time travel and teleportation. He also trained her in the dark arts of magic and body modification, so she could she could pull a bunny out of her hat and pierce her nose at the same time. Um, so that these could she could use these skills to mutilate others as Mojo had mutilated her. Finally, in a cruel act of manipulation, Mojo sent Spiral back in time to set into motion the events that led to her former self becoming Mojo's prisoner and become Spiral by attacking her past self. 
Wow, that is just a whole time loop of nuttiness there. So in the past, Spiral found herself stranded on Earth by Mojo for failing to kill Longshot and Rita. At some unknown port point, Spiral encountered Val Cooper and was recruited into Freedom Force, a revamped version of the Second Brotherhood of Mutants. Despite being utterly insane and more bloodthirsty than her new teammates, Spiral quickly became a viable member of the team, single-handedly defeating the X-Men on several occasions, as well as kidnapping the X-Men Rachel Summers for Mojo. She was also instrumental in Freedom Force's victory over the Avengers and the West Coast Avengers when sent by the US government to arrest the heroes. Her magical powers temporarily robbed Captain Marvel of her energy powers, and she also defeated Iron Man, removing two of the most powerful Avengers from the battle. You know, I think I find this funny because um, Captain Marvel was removed from battle once by Rogue, who like sucked up and absorbed her powers. And that became kind of a permanent thing. She was taken out by Spiral as well, where it temporarily robbed her of her energy powers. Like... Captain Marvel can't get a break. Sorry, Carol, like this, it sucks to suck. All right, Spiral also ran the Body Shop, which sells alien cybernetic parts to amputees and others who seek the power of cybernetic limbs. Most notably, Spiral transformed Lady Deathstrike into a cyborg, upgraded the cyborgs Cole, Macon, and Reese, originally created by Donald Pierce, and installed the cybernetic eyes in Betsy Braddock's original body, which doubled as cameras for Mojo to spy on the X-Men, so he could make his own X-Babies. I don't know. Alright, along with Mojo, Spire was shown to have played a role in Betsy Braddock's physical appearance, changing, for, uh, changing from that of a purple-haired Anglo-Saxon to a purple-haired East Asian. Originally, it was believed that the two literally transformed Betsy Braddock's original European body into an Asian one, because that seems plausible. But it was revealed that Spyro, that Spyro, without Mojo's involvement, transferred the X-Men's mind into the body of the Japanese assassin, Quanon. So, Spyro did this, just to be, just to be a pain in the butt. <laughs> She also merged the two women's minds and genetic structures, giving them each personality traits and physical char characteristics of the other, as well as having Psylocke's telepathy between them. This led to much confusion, which I wouldn't blame, um, as to which of the two was the real Elizabeth Braddock and when Revenge first appeared. Other than malicious intent, Spiral's reasons for doing this, if any, are still unknown. See, she just wanted to be a pain in the butt. Like, that's all it is. I'm just going to do it out of spite. Wouldn't it be fun to transfer a British lady into an Asian lady? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> you know, whatever. All right. Even though she was a loyal servant of Mojo, Spiral deeply resented Mojo's crass manners and cruelty towards her. In particular, Spiral has also been known to go against Mojo's orders and attack Longshot out of a psychotic need for revenge for Longshot's seduction of her and how her love for him led to her transformation into the being she is today. As such, Mojo has been known to leave Spiral stranded on Earth without her power, which she needs to travel safely between dimensions. Spiral was among the nine criminal geniuses whom Beast seeks out when it comes to reversing the effects of the 2005 storyline Decimation. Mojo himself was another one of the nine. Um, and Decimation was where all the a bunch of the mutants lost their powers, um, so they were trying to restore them. Um, okay, later Spiral teleported to Beast, claiming that Mojo was displeased with the fact that mutants are now an endangered species. And while Beast asked for her, for her help, her boss Mojo demanded it. Spiral commented that science was blinding him to find the real solution to answer how to say to an answer on how to save mankind or mutant kind. I'm sorry. Spiral tells him that energy dances its way through everything, keeping her out. That is be that it is beyond anything her body shop can simply fix, and that the death of mutants was not caused by science and it could not be saved by science as a result. Her last comments before teleporting away were, put aside what you know, for where science ends, magic begins. 
bum bum bum. That wasn't as big as the bum 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 before, because that was kind of a mini thing, mini cliffhanger. All right. Well, while repairing Lady Deathstrike after the events of the Messiah Complex, a Spiral is approached by the Red Queen and agrees to join her Sisterhood of Mutants. After a brief confrontation with Domino, the Sisterhood steal Quanin's corpse from her grave in Tokyo. Madeline performs a ceremony with Spiral's assistance, transferring the soul of the kidnapped Psylocke back into her original body. Later, the Sisterhood take on the X-Men, Spiral seriously injures Nightcrawler and Colossus while the Red Queen goes and fetches a lock of Jean Grey's hair from Wolverine's room ooh, before teleporting the Sisterhood back to base. Wait, Wolverine keeps like locks of Jean Grey's hair in his room? Like, like does he have a hair doll? Because that's creepy. Like, that's really creepy. Wolverine is old as dirt and he's got hair dolls of people? Like, is that what he does to people that he likes? He's Canadian too. Is that a Canadian thing? Let me know in the comments. Like, ew, 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 ew. Grossed out. The hell, man? Who keeps a hair? Who keeps locks of hair in people's room? What? Anyways. Back at the base, the sisterhood split up, leaving Mastermind, <laughs> leaving the Mastermind sisters and Salak behind while Spiral and the rest of the sisterhood go to Jean Grey's burial site. Because maybe they needed more hair. Who knows? Spiral takes on North Star, and when Madeline Pryor is defeated, Spiral grabs the rest of the Sisterhood, Lady Deathstrike, Chimera, Lady Mastermind, and Martinique Jason, and escapes with them. At some point, Spiral is exiled back to Earth by Mojo for reasons yet to be revealed. Mojo opted to further, further punish Spiral by way of removing her ability to teleport through dimensions. Furious, Spiral set up shop in Los Angeles where she took in a homeless girl who happened to be a new mutant. She then joined Storm's incarnation of X-Force X -Force and became a superhero. So that's her history, right? Like, I mean, she is just, she's kind of twisted. Like everything you see her do is kind of like, just kind of maniacal. But what do you think? Um, let me know in the comments, like if you're, if you're, reading this or i mean not reading it but if you're watching this on youtube leave a comment um help me grow the channel that would be wonderful send me an email at b 4 all at yahoo.com or you know send me a message on twitter or instagram under super deep dive all those avenues are open and i would love to hear more from you but anyway let's get into our powers okay spiral has powerful mystical abilities when Spiral was first introduced, she was a powerful sorceress, and during her first two encounters with the X-Men, single-handedly defeated the team. She can cast spells to stun, depower, or, or immobilize her superhuman opponents, as she did to de depower and imprison the Avengers and West Coast Avengers once they were lying still long enough for the spells to catch them. In New Avengers 53, she was revealed by the Eye of Agamotto as one of the several magic, magic users with the potential to, potential to be the next Sorcerer Supreme after Doctor Strange. Spiral spellcasting powers can be triggered through small gestures of her many hands, and with the gesture she can teleport herself and numerous people across great distances. More powerful spells require more complicated dance moves. Spiral can also open gateways between dimensions and travel through time, although it has been implied that she sometimes requires Mojo's help to successfully teleport from one dimension to another. At other times, she has independently traversed dimensions and centuries of time and set herself slightly out of phase with the time stream so as to avoid blows. Spiral often incorporates knives and swords into more complicated spells. She can also disguise herself through the use of magic. Um, Spiral's mind is apparently immune to possession. When Rogue attempted to use her power and psych-stealing ability to steal Spiral's minds and powers, Spiral stole Rogue's instead, laughing that she had danced in many people's souls. Nocturne was fooled by Spiral into thinking Spiral had been possessed, while Spiral remained in control. And according to Mystique, Spiral is aware whenever a person speaks her name by the usage of a quasi-sentient sensor which even filters out mundane uses of the word spiral. As a result of being cybernetically enhanced on Mojo World, 
she has some limited level of superhuman physical attributes. Spiral is a highly skilled hand-to-hand -hand combatant, acrobat, and sword fighter. Her six arms are fully coordinated, giving her great dexterity and athletic ability. And Spiral demonstrated highly developed skills in cybernetics and genetic manipulation, which she has used to turn humans into powerful cyborgs at her body shop. Um, the most notable include Lady Deathstrike and the Cybernetic Reavers, who have since been upgraded by Donald Pierce. Fun facts about her. Spiral appeared in the X-Men animated series. Um, she worked for Mojo and helped him capture the X-Men and force them to perform in television shows. Eventually, she betrayed Mojo after meeting and falling in love with Longshot. Their relationship took a turn for the worse, and Spiral returned to Mojo's side in her second appearance. Spiral also appeared in Wolverine and the X-Men. She appears alongside the Reavers, attacking ships bound for Genosha to pick out the mutants worthy for Mojo's programs. After the Reavers were defeated, Nightcrawler fought her. Um, when she threatened Sammy Pear, or Peri, I don't, I don't know. Um, Nightcrawler rescued him and ripped off her four cybernetic arms, causing her and the Reavers to retreat. Spiral abducted both Nightcrawler and Scarlet Witch into one of Mojo's shows and helped Mojo unleash a controlled Wolverine upon them. Wolverine was freed and all captives survived, but Mojo and Spiral escape and are implied to be planning, planning a return. A black-haired female named Ricochet is seen as the figurehead of the Reaver ship. Given Spiral's backstory involving torture, torturing her past self, this could very well be Spiral in her past life as Rita Waywood. So, because remember, she went by Ricochet Rita for a while as a stunt woman. So that's kind of a cool little fact. Um, she's also a playable character in fighting games X-Men Children of the Atom and Marvel vs. Capcom 2. She's the main villain of a game of the game X-Men Mojo World. Why wouldn't Mojo be the main villain? I don't know. And in the video game based on the movie X-Men Origins Wolverine, Wolverine fights several multi-armed sword swinging female mutants, possibly based on Spiral, who work for Gambit throughout the casino level. Okay, that, that kind of makes sense. Um, Spiral appears in Beautiful Joe's ending for Marvel vs. Capcom 3, Fate of Two Worlds. She and Mojo are shown working as producers on a police procedural show in which Joe is starring. And Spiral appears in Marvel Avengers Alliance. She appears as a PvP Season 11 reward hero. She can also be purchased in the game for 135 command points. I miss... Avengers Alliance. I liked that game. I was terrible at it, but I liked it. But what do you guys think of Spiral? Like, not not too bad, right? Let me know what you think. If you're watching on YouTube, um, leave a comment, like, subscribe, share the channel, help me grow it. If I can get up to 500 subscribers, I will do a giveaway. Um, and I will do another one at a thousand. So... If by some reason the channel goes viral and I get up to a thousand like really fast, I'll just do, I'll do two giveaways. I don't know. I, I'll do something. I will make it worth people's while because I love my audience. I actually got a really cool comment um, before someone said that they listened to me and I was, I was greatly underrated and I love that. It was such a cool comment. So thank you. Um... But you can also email me at b the number four it also b four it all at yahoo.com. Um, if you're listening on Outworld Fleet Radio or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast, find me on YouTube. Um, help me out. I need I need subscriptions and I need watch hours, so you can literally play stuff in the background like on another tab on your internet browser and just mute it, and it and it would be fine. I don't care. As long as I get it. Right? Um, but other than that, I really appreciate you guys. Um, but now is the time I go into power expansions. This is where I take a look at the hero. Do they need a new comic series? Do they need an animated series? A standalone series? A movie? Um, like what? What do they need? Last time I did Ambush Bug and we decided he didn't really need a movie. But it would be cool to have him do like kind of a looney tune shorts before the dc movies you know so i mean we've done the whole gambit with it um 
so this one's no different. Like, you know, I've always had an interest in Spiral. She's always had this kind of grace about her, and I always thought that was amazing because she had to dance for her thing. So every time they pictured her, they pictured her dancing, and, and the movements were just always amazing. Um, but she was this master warrior and looked like a dancer the whole time. I think it was even ingrained in the artist because they all drew her with that similar style. Um, so with that said, I think her story, or at least the basis of it, would be a great premise for a movie. Like, let's have her be a victim of all these weird genetic modifications, have her memories torn apart and rebuilt, and have her be something of an assassin for some kind of big bad guy. Like, it doesn't necessarily have to be Mojo, but it can be, or it can be some kind of reimagining for him. Like, there was a comic one time where Mojo is like this big fat alien creature on these like mechanical spider legs with kind of a mechanical scorpion tail um but then there was like there was another character called mojo 2 the sequel and he was this guy that was um fit in shape and you know it was just weird it was just a reimagining of the character and they even acknowledged it as that so they could do something like that but just someone weird you know like some kind of big bad guy that she's doing these assassinations for that basically ripped her apart genetically because you know they had really good um a really good way of doing that when they were kind of doing flashbacks with rocket raccoon in the guardians of the galaxy movies you know they would show these little flashbacks of him being worked on over and over again and then they had really good emotional range with bradley cooper doing the voice where he was saying he was torn apart and put back together over and over you know, so you have that kind of tortured mentality. Well, what if the people doing that to Rocket Raccoon are the same people doing that to Spiral? So she doesn't even have to be a mutant. She doesn't even have to be associated with a mutant. She can literally be an alien um, that's had this happen to her. You know, they can reimagine her and keep her, the basics of her. But anyways... Um, it could be for a fun story because like she can do a lot of those things um maybe even in a future guardians of the galaxy movie you know the thing with guardians of the galaxy is they can cycle through characters and still have the movie intact you know they can keep um a couple characters while a new set is coming in and then cycle them out like that and kind of phase as they're phasing some out they're bringing new characters in and so the roster can constantly change and she could be on that um you know she could take gamora's place you know or nebula's and watch all three of them like you know go against each other because nebula was tortured too and given all these cybernetic enhancements what if she is like the third thanos daughter that no one really knew about that could be cool that could that could that could be cool and she could her cybernetic enhancements let her teleport and stuff like she could do this like it's very possible and it could work but um who would who would we cast for something like this now um with this i don't think race would really be an issue she's always been portrayed as like a caucasian woman with white hair i really don't think her looks were that important as long as they have the skills to make the movements look graceful and deadly now with that um i think i've got a good person to cast a spiral and and she is caucasian but that wasn't a factor in it it was more the movements and um this girl has this weird smile that is very it's very infectious like it's a it's a very happy smile but i think if we put a little dark edge to it it could be very unsettling um but there's a show on netflix that my wife was watching about some ballet school um that could like link to to paris in the late 1800s or something like it's some it's some weird thing um i can't remember the name of it because i watched maybe two or three episodes with her but it wasn't my favorite show but it did have an actress who i think could be a perfect fit for spiral her name is jessica lord um so if you if you need to look her up she's super cute um, she's got this, she's the main character in that show, but she's got this big smile, 
Um, she's got decent acting ability, and she's got like that real grace when she dances. Um, and I think with all that, if she could go a little dark, she could very well be our six-armed assassin with that dancing movement and evil smile at the same time. So, that's my pick. Um, but she's got a very athletic figure, you know, not, not overly muscular, like, you know, with a ballerina, she's very strong, but lean at the same time. And I think that something like that would work really well for Spiral. Um, doesn't have the height, but I think that, you know, we've seen a lot of people that don't have the height or that have too much height, like Hugh Jackman play characters. The height isn't that big of a deal. It can, it can be worked with. So, that's my pick. But let me know what you guys think. Like, I would I would love to hear your feedback. Did I make a good choice? Do you have another choice? Do you have another idea on what we could do with Spiral? Because I tell you, she's a very unique character in the fact that um, if you look at a lot of... If you look at a lot of characters in Marvel and DC... There's usually a good counterpoint for each one of them, um, you know, in some form or fashion. Spiral, I can't really think of any. And like, she's got a very unique power set, skill set. She's very dominant, but she's also not put in the forefront, which is really weird considering that Psylocke was one of the, like, um one of the like i guess like the most looked at super females in the 90s and early 2000s and she was responsible that character was responsible for that you know so let me know what you think i'm gonna step out for now uh i got lots to do and i don't have any time to do it but guys i hope everyone is blessed i hope everyone's happy I hope everyone is safe, and I hope everyone is smart, and if you're not smart, don't get caught. I will see you guys next week. I think I am covering the request for Star Brand from the new universe, so look out for that. I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.